We just had a great battle, Master Splinter. They were many, but we kicked. We fought well. Hey everybody, welcome back to another Korean film review. This one is The Great Battle, um, directed by Kim Gwang Shik. Now, his previous films, My Dear Desperado and Tabloid Truth, aren't um, going to be names that many people are familiar with, so we can't judge this movie going in based on just the director's previous works alone. But this one has um, a pretty stellar cast, released during Thanksgiving holiday week, Korean Thanksgiving holiday week, um, along with two other pretty big movies with uh, other big name actors. So uh, they had pretty high hopes for this one going in. It's, it's a big movie. Now, this movie is um, based on a legendary battle for a city named Anshi, so Anshi City. Now this, this battle cannot help but be compared to the Greek battle against the Persian Empire at Thermopylae. Very similar setup here. And this film takes place in 645 AD, so roughly 200,000 Tang Empire soldiers from China laid siege to Anqi Fortress, who had a fighting force of roughly 5,000. So. Very, very similar um, in terms of numbers and in terms of being sort of fortified and being uh, kind of holding back an incredible siege. So for those that don't know, uh, this film takes place in, uh, in an old Korean kingdom in a time when there was three different kingdoms. So the year is 645. This one is Goguryeo. And um, these, this area and its people are largely remembered for their incredible warrior spirits. Um, and that is a trait that continues to be a source of pride for um, even modern Korean people today. If you have ever watched anything like the UFC Ultimate Fighting Championship and have seen some of those Korean fighters um, and their like lion heart spirit, you know what I'm talking about. So this film is mostly about that character trait um, as highlighted through the bravery and fighting spirit on display by the Anshi soldiers defending force in this historical period drama film. So this film opens as the Tang forces are continuing their invasion into Goguryeo and after one epic opening battle sequence, the Goguryeo general sort of acknowledges one of its soldiers for having just this outstanding loyalty uh, to the army and is tasked with a sort of secret mission to go to the Anshi fortress and assassinate the defending general there. Now he's being accused of having some sort of a betrayed the army or as being disloyal in some sort of sense. And so the Goguryeo general kind of wants the Tang forces to just bypass Anshi city and they're gonna have this huge last stand in Pyongyang where all of the Goguryeo forces are massing. The soldier tasked with this mission is named Samur and when he arrives in Anshi city, he finds his target to be very unfitting of this portrayal given to him by his commanding officer. He finds his target to be trusting, thoughtful, very hardworking, and putting his people above all else and He's kind of he's kind of taken aback by this, which causes him to question his mission of assassination. And just when he's at his kind of crisis point, the Tang soldiers arrive, and all hell breaks loose. Now, obviously, this film is called The Great Battle, and um, it's going to have a lot of battle sequences. And the battle slash action sequences in this movie are quite good thankfully um, and they do dominate a majority of this film's runtime however I did find myself becoming a little bit battle fatigued uh, roughly about halfway through this movie and that's this is coming from someone who can really play those dynasty warrior mindless action games for hours so you know I, I did feel a little bit like I needed a breather 
Now there are moments in this film where the fighting does break and we do get to spend some time with these characters, but it still feels lacking in quality time. Ultimately making their heroic moments of glory a little bit harder to connect with on emotional level when they do take place. Now some of the tactics on display by the Tang forces and how they attempt to siege the Anshi fortress come across as a little bit far-fetched, borderlining fantasy elements. But after I did some little bit of research, um, did some reading on like the actual historical event that took place, some of these tactics that they that they um, undertake are actually more historically accurate than I thought. So, you know. That just makes it all that more mind-blowing. Now the main problem that I have with this film's action sequences or battle sequences is that they are very similar to say the Battle of Helm's Deep in Lord of the Rings The Two Towers or the Battle of Castle Black in Game of Thrones. While the Battle of Helm's Deep or Castle Black is just a part of the story of an overall bigger picture, the Battle of Anshi City or the Great Battle that's the entire movie. So the whole movie is this siege. And like I said, there are a couple breaks, but that's pretty much all it is. So Jo and Sung plays Anshi City's legendary defending general, uh, Yang Mang Chun. Now he's a pretty interesting character. Um, he's very trusting, almost to a fault, but he is really just the living embodiment of courage and bravery, um, who competently defends his people with every trick in the book. Uh, so he really portrays this legendary figure quite well. Every scene that he's in, I, I enjoyed immensely. His closest captains are also pretty awesome. Uh, and they're really like those generals from the Dynasty Warriors video games, who were just leaps and bounds better than any other fighter on the battlefield, able to do larger than life type moves. Awesome overall. But some of that was a little bit too much. For example, uh, the character played by Sol Hyun, uh, she plays this captain of a female fighting force at the fortress who has her moments, don't get me wrong, but one of them is just crosses the line of being way too ridiculous in believability and um, what she's able to achieve, it's just like too larger than life. Costumes, sets, the whole look of this film is spectacular. So the film does really well with setting the scene and taking you to Goguryeo. I did have a small issue with some of the dialogue coming from the Chinese soldiers in this movie. And now while I don't speak Chinese, I have grown accustomed to the language through various ways, whether it's my friends or watching a lot of different Chinese films. Uh, the Chinese in this movie is just sounds awful. Uh, every line is delivered like an awkward proclamation um, and I just couldn't help but cringe and I can't even really tell you exactly why. It just sounded very unnatural. So the great battle is great with its on-screen portrayal of these historical warriors um, and I believe the film succeeds more so as a film about that spirit that was that they embodied and re ultimately remains as part of the collective Korean identity today and a little bit less so as just an action film by itself although I did really love uh, how this film how the film's climax was constructed and put together and edited it was pretty amazing so overall I'm gonna rate the great battle a 6 out of 10 worth checking out if it comes near you for sure. Um, if you enjoy this film and its sort of period look, costuming, style, I also highly recommend you check out the uh, older film, Korean film, called Musa or The Warrior. Now the film takes place quite a bit later in time, but it still is one of the best portrayals of one of the old Korean kingdoms in terms of setting and costuming and all that good stuff. All right, so if you guys did see The Great Battle and you want to share your thoughts, love to hear what you thought about the movie in the comments below. If you like this video, please like it. That really helps support the channel. Um, you can subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest uh, updates. Until next time, this is Tyler from The Movie Beat. Keep watching movies.